Today on WBTV, we are going to be going over both of our top five TV shows and some honorable mentions as well. So today we're going to be going over our top five TV shows. Now, because we are in Canada, I don't know about Blake, but some of mine are specifically Canadian TV shows that you can't access in other places. But we are recommending these shows, you know, we think they're good shows. So if you want to watch some, you know, you can scroll through the video, you can write them all down. I'm sure there'll probably be a typed out list in the description if you're looking for it. Uh, so without you further ado... You say that now, wait, you say that now. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to alternate starting with number five, working our way to number four, or sort of working our way to number two, and then we're going to mention all of our honorable mentions before we get that number one in here. So without further ado, let's get into the video. At number five, I have the NBC show, The Good Place. Now, when I first started watching the show, it, it just showed up on Netflix. And you know, I'm not gonna spoil it for the folks out there, but you know, I, I was watching the show and it's one of those, it's, it's a hilarious show, first of all, and I was very sad when it ended this year. But it's also one of those shows where literally every episode ends on a cliffhanger, like no matter what. And there is like hundreds of thousands of plot twists, like every episode there's a different plot twist. There was like a major plot twist, I would argue it's like one of the biggest plot twists ever in TV that happened at the end of the first season, because that was like insane, nobody saw it coming. Uh, it is over now, but you can find it on Netflix. Uh, the seasons never really like tapered off, like they were all good. It went good straight to the end. My my is it my go now. Yeah. Is it my my number five? Okay. So I'm just gonna preface this. Obviously, this is our top five favorite. I'm not saying these are the best shows I've watched. I'm not a good critic that well either. I'll watch a new show and I'll be like, damn, that was good. Or most of the time, I don't watch enough shows because I judge them too much and I think they're going to be bad. But. My top five is um, a Netflix original show. It's called The Umbrella Academy. And it is a superhero show that is based off of comics. But, I mean, that's, like, it, I found it very different than your regular superhero show where it's just one character and it's their origin story. You're, it's them fighting one big bad villain. This, it's like the concept of there's this genius inventor named something Hargreaves, Mr. Hargreaves, and apparently there were like 37 different kids all over the world born on the same day magically, all at the same time, all on the same day, same year. So this inventor goes and seeks out seven different children and adopts them. And he finds out they have superpowers and he trains them. And then it, like the story is them older and their, like, their father has just died. So they've all come together again. And you learn more about it, and it's crazy chaotic. And I just felt like it wasn't your stereotypical, like, superhero show. And it felt more like a, like a slice of life, almost, at some points in time. But it, it was still, like, throwing in superpowers and mix-ups, and I don't know. I just found it very interesting, very cool. I mean, I've and heard season two is coming soon. I've heard plenty of good reviews about about that show. So I guess it's my turn then. Uh, so for number four, I have a three-way tie. Oh, what the hell? Because wait, <laughs> wait, I have I have on my list eight total shows. Wade's over here like I got a top five, but wait, my number four spot has a three-way tie. <laughs> I couldn't decide on what to where to put these shows and honestly I think I could put these shows just to make my list and that could have been it. The first show that I have at my number four spot is the NBC show Superstore. This show is like it's like the office, but it's a whole bunch of people working in a Walmart like superstore. And if you guys have like ever been to a Walmart, like they have all these clips of the weird and crazy people in the Walmart and like stuff that they do. You know, it, it also throws a lot of cliffhangers there. Like in the end of one season, uh, they got hit by a tornado uh, just kind of out of nowhere. 
and you know it's got a whole bunch of weird things about like you know the guy poops in the shower and stomps it down the toilet so you know it's just got a whole bunch of funny things uh, it has America Ferrera in it and uh, Mark McKinney from Kids in the Hall. The other one I have tied at this spot is Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, I I also think it's it's much the same. You know, it's an office like TV show. Uh, I've recently started to rewatch it, and you know, there isn't an episode of Brooklyn Nine Nine that's like dull and boring. So it's basically like this detective Jake Peralta uh, working in a precinct where he has his new captain who's really hard nosed and like hard to read Captain Holt I mean I'm sure all of you have watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine or at least watched an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and you know we almost lost it folks but then it, it yeah. came back on NBC plenty of old episodes I forgot about but they're all hilarious and then the other one I have tied with this is another NBC show it is Parks and Rec so Parks and Rec came out after the office and it almost was better than the office in a way because it kind of capitalized on everything that the office wasn't good at and like there are hundreds of thousands of characters in this world they've built this whole fake world around Pawnee Indiana and you know it's got Chris Pratt's character is just hilarious and the show was great and the way they ended it was really good and even they came back for a reunion episode a few weeks ago uh, because through COVID and it was also really hilarious you know little Sebastian and all this stuff it, it, it's just a great show every time I watch it you know I've always I'm always laughing my head off and there's there's some great moments so that is my number four spot the three-way tie between NBC's three comedies okay okay wait over here i got a, i got a three-way tie you know i'm gonna steal from my i got a i got a two-way tie because i wanted to put a show on my list and i wanted to put it here but i recently watched another show that made me say otherwise and i mean it's not going to be any longer because we already picked one of them so my number four the first is tied brooklyn 99 it's a great show it's like a cop show which has been overdone so many times but it's a cop show turned comedy and Andy Samberg is just like amazing and I yeah. love like uh, the guy who plays Charles Boyle like Terry Crews is great like yeah. all of the actors make it so amazing I mean so Hitchcock and Scully are the best part of that show oh. you know they're so funny Doug Judy the Pontiac oh, Bandit, yeah. one of my favorite characters as well and then Adrian Pimento yeah. that character so so great so good and then my second one is Community which is an amazing show, like, and I think solely it's a, so amazing just because of the creators behind it. You have both of the Russo brothers who have now worked on multiple of the newest Marvel movies, and they've made great movies like that with that. And they worked on that alongside Dan Harmon. And I think Dan Harmon is literally like a creative genius. Dan Harmon, like, makes so much good shit and he has such a good formula to his comedy and show writing that he can't make something bad i feel yeah and basically what community is it's about this group of i think seven people eight people that all go to a community college they miss out on something in their life or like they didn't do something so they're trying to go back to school and just a whole bunch of ragtag people going to this crappy rundown community college and it's just insanity and shenanigans and chaos ensue. Like, some of the craziest plots happen at this rundown community college. Like, there's one, like, infamous episode. It's like, it's like Brooklyn Nine-Nine. They have the infamous Halloween, like, heist episode, yeah. which is the best episode in, like, the entire season most of the time. And community, they normally end it with something called a paintball episode or yeah. something like that. And basically... What it is, is it's, they, they walk up and it starts and it's like, hello everybody, we are throwing a paintball competition. Last one standing gets to win a thousand dollars or a million dollars or free this or something like this. And legit, it turns into a war zone. Like legit, one time with a paintball, they made it post-apocalyptic. 
the other time they made it western themed yeah and it's just it's crazy I believe there was like a sci-fi Star Wars one too at one yep. point. What's that? That's like the birthplace of uh, Ken Jong, you know, as Senior Chang. And I still think like Ken, most of Ken Jong's characters that he plays in movies, they all come back to Senior Chang, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But like that character is just hilarious. Just like like Senior Chang, it shows Ken Jong's regular personality like so much already. But then they add the twist of like psychoticness and craziness yeah. in there as well so moving on to my number three pick this is a specifically canadian tv show called mr d uh, oh. so uh this is a tv show that i originally watched and enjoyed but i didn't really get as much appreciation to it and uh, the show ended a few years ago and i didn't really get much appreciation to it until when uh, i went and saw jerry d live doing stand-up and then I went back and rewatched the show and the show has like so many funny moments like about teachers because if you don't know the, the plot of the show is Jerry D who is a stand-up comedian he was a teacher before he was a stand-up comedian he was a horrible teacher like he was he taught phys ed and grade 12 history and he has stories about like oh he took his grade 12 history exams to like a campfire and handed them out to his friends and was like ev after everybody marks three exams we, we can go back and actually start to party and then he lost them all so then he just told every kid they got a hundred percent on it so like stuff like that is like all throughout the show like the show is just like crazy teachers and there's like there's these reoccurring kids like there's amanda susan who's like br uh, the bratty kid and i mean it's got so many funny parts there there's like a, a funny opening with kindergartens and there are like some crazy plot twists in the seasons uh you know where what happens when jerry gets fired or all these other things but and i mean or jerry becomes principal for the day or something like that like there's all these different things but i do i love the show Rewatching it it's great i mean it's very canadian like all canadian tv shows it's just full of like canadian guest star guest stars that are like only canadian but yeah, I love the show. Uh, it's very hilarious, and I would suggest if you're like in school or you're a teacher, I think you'd find it very entertaining. There, there's nothing else there, way. There's no that's tie. It. No, there's that's no it. six other tie for the third spot. Okay, my number three show, and I like love cartoons and I love animated shows. So obviously there was gonna be something like that on my list. So my number three is a show that has been on the air for the last like eight years, seven years, and they even ended up making a movie and a special like extended show and it is called Steven Universe and it is like an animated show and it's just so amazing like the concept I just love it and I love the characters I love like the life and just the the atmosphere and energy from the show and like if you love musicals, legit, every other episode they like sing a song like certain kids shows or sing a musical. They made a movie and the movie is literally just a musical. But that's me rambling on about it. What, what's it about is it's like this kid who is living with these like aliens called gems. And he finds out he was born from a human and an alien called a gem. And it's him discovering his powers, growing up, and then realizing how gems are and how they act and yada 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 that and that and it's they got five seasons of the regular show then they made a movie to close it off and then they made an extended show where it was like in the original show he was like 10 to 12 and then it's like they skipped ahead when he's 16 a teenager and it's steven universe future and everything's resolved but it's more of a it's more of a look because in the show like, it, it's a fun show, it's like a comedy, it's heartfelt, but if you think about it, Steven experiences in the show so much trauma, he's endangered, he's almost killed, he's captured, he's kidnapped multiple times, and Steven Universe Future does a perfect job at addressing all of it. We're, I mean, we're, we're back from that cut because yeah. the battery died, but yeah, it's him experiencing and realizing how grim his like past was, and I feel like it's an amazing wrap up and there's so many great and interesting characters and it does a great job of introducing you to all of these 
concepts and crazy like wacky sci-fi things from this other world and his crazy powers and the the hierarchy in gems and how gems are what gems are and even like in the first couple seasons there's barely anything to do with gems or when there is barely anything to do with gems it's just him walking around his wacky city and doing random things meeting crazy characters or crazy people so it's like a great little like smaller like well i wouldn't really say it's small it's gotten pretty big recently but yeah it's a it's a good animated show the bits yeah, the bits, the bits. Okay, so coming up to my number two, uh, I mean, I wanted to put it at my number one, but there's one show that I think trumps it for me, is The Office. Uh, you know, I, uh, I've i binged The Office over like 15 times probably by now. Uh, I, I lost, I stopped counting after 10. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those shows that I've watched pretty much constantly since like for at least five or six or seven years now um i've been re-watching it since the office ladies podcast started and you know it's just it's like you know all the new shows now like it was one of the first shows not to have a laugh track in it or wasn't the first one of the first sitcoms not to be confined to like a studio audience and a specific set and you know i do love uh michael scott that's why i really like the office uh you know nine seasons ran strong eight c eight season was you know not the best nine season the ninth one was better but yeah i I've, i'm a big office fan you know i've always always been that way so you know getting into the office doing the office trivia all that stuff Okay, so I mean, my number two, uh, another Netflix show, another Netflix original, and it has three seasons, and they're working on the fourth, and it's like blown up. So what I chose as my number two TV show is Stranger Things, because of just the craziness and the sci-fi aspect, and this different world, and in a sense, it kind of feels like a superhero show type thing, and I love that, because of Eleven having psychic powers and superpowers and then this otherworldly sci-fi stuff coming in from the upside down and like legit the monsters are right out of D&D and I love that stuff it's like Demogorgon um Mind Flayer I just love the sci-fi aspects and realistically like each season I feel like normally a show it either stays consistently good or it starts peering off and going down it's very hard to keep topping something even in movies it's very hard to make a sequel better and then even a third movie even better but i feel like stranger things does that and it executes that so well like the first season was really good and got people interested in it the second season was even better and added more layers to it developed the characters even more and then season three i just i loved season three season three was so good like season three was probably one of the best seasons so far like even yeah. better than the first yeah I, I totally forgot about that i just added it to my honorable mentions uh <laughs> so i guess now we'll go through the honorable mentions just kind of quickly talking about things and uh and some summing them up so we'll alternate back and forth so my first okay. honorable mention is this hour has 22 minutes that this is a canadian political comedy tv show and you know i i kind of i like politics and I, I i just find the show very funny you know it's always got some good funny canadian humor in it my, one of my okay we're just spitfiring these one of my honorable mentions uh, i guess the first one is another cartoon show and it's called gravity falls and it's by a creator named alex hirsch and just the time and care he took and it's a disney show so it's even pg like PG-13 for like younger audiences. He made an amazing like mystery show and the dedication this guy puts in, he legit embeds hidden codes into episodes and stuff like that. And like even the show has ended, he still does like scavenger hunts. Like on Instagram or on Twitter, he'll post a picture of this and there'll be a code and secrets and it'll be like find where this is. And it's a real life scavenger hunt using coding and scriptures and secret writing so it's just a really great really cool crazy show of just sci-fi shenanigans my second honorable mention is another canadian tv show it's pretty new we're on we're getting into the fourth season 
but I think every season of it tends to get better. It's uh, Kim's Convenience. Hey. So, I mean, the first season was good, and then every season after that has gotten better. You know, there's some weird characters, but, but it's, it's pretty funny. I, I find it decently funny. Okay, my other honorable mention, or uh, another one, is Lost. Like, a lot of people say it kind of, like, went off on season four, season five, and it's not the greatest. But, I mean, it's just it's just a weird, random show. Like, these people, plane crash, land on this island, and it's just, this island, there's so many mysteries and crazy stuff going on. Like, no one has ever been able to find the island. You can't leave the island. And literally, first episode, there's a character named John Locke, and he was in a wheelchair on the plane. He crashes and lands on the island. And he's magically, his body is no longer paralyzed because of the island. Uh, my next two, I'll lump them together. I got Dan Vermeer and Hiccups. Mm. So, uh, the Dan Vermeer was created by, uh, Mark White. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's a pretty good show. It's about, it's, uh, played by, the main character is played by Freddie Wanick, which is, uh, from Connery Ass. And he's, he's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty entertaining. You know, got some weird, funny characters in there. And then Hiccups is Brent Butt and Nancy Robertson. It's written by Brent Butt. And both of these shows only lasted two seasons because there was a big uh, corporate shuffle at CTV that ended up in them getting cancelled. But I, I wish we could have seen more than just two seasons. The, the two seasons of these shows are just so funny and hilarious. You can find them on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I, I wish we had more than two seasons, but yeah, that's in there. My other, another honorable mention for me is Heroes, which is another superhero-esque show. I feel like it takes a very realistic point of view on it and like has a very s s strong sense of realism with it. Because it's like a regular world, the real world, and all these other people with superpowers in it and how they interact. And I mean, it's still a superhero show, like, the world's going to end is the first plot, and there's this one guy named Hero who has time powers, and it's like, you gotta save the cheerleader to save the world, and the cheerleader has, like, super healing, and there's a villain. My, uh, my next few, uh, I'll just finish my list out here. Uh, we got, uh, Modern Family. You know, it, it was it was really good, I loved all the seasons. You know, it got bad closer to the end, but it just ended this year, and it was... Nice ending, uh, Arrested Development. Uh, that that was the OG show without a laugh track, uh, created by Ron Howard and Mitch Hurwitz. Uh, most episodes were directed by the Russo brothers, and that's why there is a stair car in every Russo brothers movie, is a good old reference to Arrested Development. But I mean, the fourth season's garbage when it came back to Netflix, but the fifth season was, was really good. And yeah, I really liked the show. It was another one that got cancelled really early for no particular reason. But yeah, I really liked the show and uh, it's hilarious. It's got some good good bits in it. And then we got uh, Community. Once yeah, again, yeah, for yeah. the reason that Blake has said, really great show. Uh, Santa Clarita Diet. Uh, I mean, I was, I was pretty sad when it got cancelled, but like every episode was super good, funny. And like, it always ended on a cliffhanger, so it was really addicting when you watched it. Uh, the Simpsons, you know, just because obviously, good. I mean, it's not really good anymore, but the older episodes, Mr. <laughs> Plow, you know, uh, Big Bang Theory, and then, you know, Stranger Things, all in there. Okay, so my number one is technically two shows, but it, it's only oh one. Oh my god! It's Corner Gas and Corner I Gas Animated. So, so Corner Gas is like a show about uh, small town Saskatchewan and growing up in small town Saskatchewan. There's this little gas station. I've been a big fan since I was little. Uh, it recently came back. For, it came back for a movie after six seasons. Six seasons and a movie. It came back for a movie, uh, Corner Gas, the movie, which was all crowdfunded. And then uh, it has now come back for an animated series. So they're they're going Hell into yeah. they're going into our third season for Corner Gas Animated. But like you know, the show is just really funny. Like the writing is really good. Like quick wit writing and so many good scenes. You know, choking on a pickle and then eating it later. Like all these things, pretty great. Um, and yeah, I've I've been to Rollo where the show was filmed. I've met the cast many times, you know, it's just, it's, uh, 
it's one, one of my favorite shows. I think it's my all-time favorite show right there. Okay, so for my number one favorite show, it has very many similarities and culminations of other things on my list, is Rick and Morty, which is, is a, an amazing animated show. It is such a good, funny, sci-fi comedy. It is created by Dan Harmon, and I think Dan Harmon's like genius writing from Community also shows in here with Rick and Morty. And I mean, it's basically Dan Harmon's writing in an animated sense. Like, I remember a Community episode was animated, and it was amazing. I loved it when they did an animated Community episode, and Rick and Morty's just basically that, but all animated. And it's just crazy sci-fi and science fiction, which I love super nerdy concepts and like just crazy like adventures and it's like even besides the comedy and like the out of world fictional stuff there's different ways to look at the show if you look at it differently there's a lot of like heavier topics as well he's understood like how there's infinite realities infinite possibilities so even if he died it doesn't matter like in certain episodes he dies and just gets like cloned over and over again so like he knows everything about the world he's unlocked the secrets of the world he's the smartest man in the world and by doing that he's made himself depressed and realizes nothing matters whatever he does whatever happens it doesn't matter because he can do whatever he wants so there's multiple times at the end of seasons or start of seasons where it's him like working through his like depression or like he literally how it's a part of his speech and character design how he's drooling and he's always drunk and drinking alcohol and that's to try and drown out the thoughts that oh like nothing he does matters he's just a blip in this massive thing and nothing that happens in the world so like there's just so many different layers to it as well and just i love it so Some good onion layers yeah, like ogres. Ogres are like onions. So that is our list, our top five TV shows. If you guys like this video, make sure to click that like button. We're thinking about doing a top five movie list later. So if you like the video, click that like button. Leave a comment down below what you think of our list. The list will maybe be in the description. And, uh... Maybe, maybe only the top five, not the yeah, honorable Yeah, yeah, no, not the honorable mentions, just the top five on each. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching this episode of WBTV. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with the guy at Freshco, share it with the guy at the Real Canadian Superstore, share it with Logan on YouTube who wants Stop. to be your no, friend. I was literally just thinking <laughs> about that, but was choosing not to mention it. <laughs> and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching WBT. If you want to see more videos like this one, click the video on the right. If you want to see skits, click the video on the left. And make sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video.